I wanted to talk about alligators, sharks, and some people. Um, we're not supposed to wear bathing suits at the beach that are shiny. We're not supposed to keep our jewelry on. Even dark suits that are shiny, like this. Especially not this. Because they think it's a seal. They, they think it's a fish with shiny fins. And now, now is the time when uh, shark attacks happen, you know, the late spring, the early summer. And unfortunately, we have the most shark attacks in the state of Florida. And about alligators, we have a lot of water here, and it's very hot here. Alligators like fresh water, so that could be the pool in your backyard, or a canal, or many other bodies of water, but they can also survive if they're curious enough to enter brackish water, water that's a little bit salty, you know, the fresh water mixed with seawater. So if you have a pool, you need to have a fence. An electrified fence would be the best. I, I stay away from fresh water uh, places in, um, now that I'm older I do, I have more sense, in Florida. Because you just never know. They hide under the water. Uh, the most dangerous time for alligators to be near them seems to be in the breeding season, which is, you know, spring through the middle of summer. And this reminds me of uh, people. We, we can attract, uh, besides alligators and sharks, we can attract the kind of people that are like alligators and sharks. So... I think modest dressing helps a lot. Um, these are my work clothes. This is a man's shirt because it has it has pockets and, and it's long, it's modest. But w even when I go out to the stores or something, I'll you know try to look a little nicer. But still, I won't try to look like I'm trying to attract a mate, you know. And um, the way people dress these days. Uh, hair is a very sensual thing, and a lot of women spend so much time trying to look their make their hair look so exotic and so beautiful. And besides that, it's not very hygienic uh, for your hair to be hanging. You know, it ends up in the food. It ends up everywhere. And clothes, you know, back in the 40s and 50s. Uh, police officers uh, had classes on how to recognize uh, a woman of the night, let's say. And it was always the same, uh, showing a lot of skin, wearing very tight clothing, wearing as little clothing as possible. So I don't know what cla classes in services uh, the police officer get, officers are getting these days. But they can't be getting the same teaching because now it seems like the majority of people are dressing like that because, I don't know, it makes them feel attracted, attractive or wanted. But uh, now it's hard to tell who's who. I've, I've become so, um, so used to seeing most people uh, in my age group dressing the same having the same kind of makeup, the same kind of hairstyle, saying the same kind of things to the point that it's very difficult uh, for me um, to remember who's who because they all look alike. Plus, most of them are, are very overweight. So that's another thing that's alike, you know, and, and the men too. And it's very rare for me uh, to see someone uh, my age wearing a beard. Because um, every man has a different kind of beard, so that would help me to recognize people. But uh, if everyone's shaved, they, they kind of look like women, you know? And what's interesting about that is uh, 
obesity causes more fat cells and fat cells produce estrogen yes even in a man and um, if they're heavy enough they start to lose uh, a little bit of their male ca characteristics the secondary characteristics you know let's say they they lose uh, the hair on their arms or legs and they they start being feminized so guys being overweight is not just a health problem in, in the way you look but it, it's it's a gen gender problem you, you start losing what you value um, there's a small health food store near where I live and I don't go there anymore because I don't think they're ethical the last time I was there um, I was uh, paying for something there with the, the cashier he comes in and he asks the lady uh, which aisle is the testosterone in and uh, she told him where it was and I thought now why doesn't the owner of this little health food store have an information sheet so when someone comes in asking for testosterone because perhaps they have a problem with ED why don't why doesn't it say on this information sheet that what the causes of ED are which is uh, you know clogging up your blood vessels because that reproductive reproductive or organ is basically a blood vessel and the the capillaries and arteries veins in there get clogged up too with a high fat diet and you know why don't they also mention on this information sheet that alcohol is a very very common cause of ED so I didn't think it was very ethical to just tell them where to buy the uh, testosterone pills and you know not be concerned with with the person's health so um, I didn't I don't go there anymore I go to the bigger health food store so okay I talked about alligators and sharks and ED and and not attracting uh, sharks with uh, shiny bathing suits and not attracting shark type people if you're a woman not trying to attract a man because of your physical appearance but attract people with your with your ethics with your with your knowledge with your kindness with your courtesy I was teaching a class a few years ago as a guest speaker it was a world religions class and the guy who's a friend of the family of ours he wanted me to speak about uh, Judaism from a feminine perspective so I did and uh, I enjoyed it very much and uh, I, I spoke about uh, the religion and the way of dress and the way of eating and one and one one night one uh, late afternoon when I was speaking there I I said to the class now some of you might be thinking why should I listen to this lady look what she looks like so I said if they're thinking that I want them to think about if all women in the world all of a sudden undid their cosmetic surgeries removed their false parts of their clothing that they're trying to make themselves look different uh, removed their girdles um, stopped dyeing their hair didn't wear makeup anymore if they all did that I might be the best looking of the bunch so at that point there was this young man in the back of the room he looked like a you know an agricultural student he looked like a country boy and he 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 said in a loud voice you are the best one in the room the best looking anyway I thought that was funny also in that class uh, I spoke about um, men are circumcised in, in the Bible and this is something for someone's health because in the womb 
that part of the male's body needs protection because uh, the the infant moving around in the in the womb might scratch themselves or something. Babies have fingernails, even in the womb. And so once they uh, are born, that piece of skin on the male reproductive organ is not not needed for protection anymore. But now it becomes something that's a hindrance to cleanliness. So what served to protect before in the womb is not needed once the uh, infant is born. So that's why one of the reasons why it's removed. And there's, it, there's been studies that show the wives of circumcised men have uh, less uterine cervical cancer than the wives of uncircumcised men. So, you know, there have been studies like that. And also HIV exposure and HIV infection, there's also about 60% less HIV infection in circumcised males. So figure that out. It gets complicated. Anyway, these are the things that are coming to mind today. I was uh, trying to go through the house and get rid of things that I don't need. And that's why I ran into this note about protecting yourself against sharks. So that's how this whole thing started today. And I also wrote on here that uh, if you wear tight clothing, mosquitoes can bite, bite you easier. And if you wear loose clothing, it's more difficult because, you know, there's folds in the clothing and it's not as close to the skin. Also, perfumes attract mosquitoes. I was thinking that I don't have very many flies, hardly ever, or mosquitoes here because there's spider webs and spiders all over the place. If I go out and vacuum outside on this little vinyl fence I have, the next day the spider webs are back. So they must be catching a lot of things, things that are not bothering me. I seem to have a working ecosystem here which I'm glad my uh, dog has had uh, some gastrointestinal problems lately. So I took a stool specimen to his veterinarian and they checked it and they said there's no worms. I would have been surprised if there was worms because I don't use insecticide here. No, there's snakes and frogs and lizards and roaches and spiders and rabbits and, and all kinds of birds. So everything seems to be functioning together. So I try to convince people not to use insecticide on their lawns uh, besides it messing up the natural balance of things. It ends up in our water. And there have been certain uh, insecticides that have been shown to raise the risk for Parkinson's disease. Anyway, uh, my whole point uh, today is uh, try to plan ahead, be prepared, don't do dangerous things. I used to do dangerous things when I was young. Um, <laughs> one thing that comes to mind is um, when I was in South Florida on this beach, I, I took a walk and I was alone. And, you know, there were people there, there were lifeguards. And I was just so enthralled with, you know, the smell of the, of the ocean and the fresh air and uh, the waves and uh, the seagulls that all of a sudden I realized I had gotten to a part that was a little bit deserted. So I was in my 30s then. So I, I turned around and started heading back to the more uh, populous area. And then I see about 200 feet ahead of me this, this big guy uh, walking towards me. And then I noticed that he had this uh, T-shirt on and nothing else. And the T-shirt was not long enough to cover what should be covered. So he's walking towards me. I'm walking towards him. And there was nowhere else for me to go. There was the ocean on my left, and there was a bunch of trees on my right. And I'm thinking I have to say something to this guy. I can't just act like I don't see what's, well, what he's not wearing. 
So as I passed him, I said, is this how your mother taught you to dress in public? And he just kept walking past me, and I just kept walking past him. But you see, I shouldn't have been in that place alone. Anything could have happened. But anyway, I, I hope I have more sense uh, now that I'm older. I think I'm more careful. Maybe I'm too careful. But, um, well, maybe next year I'll look back at this year and think there was something uh, stupid I did this year. But anyway, we, uh, we keep learning. Always try to talk to older people. Um, they have a lot of experience. Hopefully they have some wisdom and know how to express it to you. When I was a little girl, I just, I liked my friend's parents more than I liked my friends. Isn't that funny? I always liked older people. And I think maybe I really was never like a child. I was always like a little old lady in a, in a cute little girl's body. So now I can be what I'm supposed to be, a real old lady. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this talk. I enjoy your comments. I'm very grateful. It's nice to have people to talk to and instead of just talking to my dog. One of my sons recently asked me if I, he wanted, uh, if I wanted him to get me, you know, one of those little things that you talk to and say, uh, Alexa, turn on the TV. Uh, Alexa, uh, how much are five pounds of uh, potatoes today at the grocery store? And I said to him, you know, I'm already talking to myself. I'm already talking to the dog. And I'm already talking to the Almighty. I don't think I want to start talking to a little piece of plastic also. Okay. That's enough for today, I think.